there's just as much chance that the sun is gonna turn blue right now. It didn't, as Jeff used real weights. Coach Craig, and we're singing along with Ali. And today we're gonna go over Athlean X. And has he settled the debate? Is he actually using fake weights or not? I hear he's proven that he's not. Tons of people messaged me and said, Greg, you gotta do a video? Jeff Cavalier proved he wasn't using fake weights. Watch this video. A few people directed me to this video. Sean Nalawanyig. He said, Athlean X proves the haters wrong with real weights. Guess what? I'm doing a video on Jeff Cavalier using fake weights or not. Why? Because I'm chasing clout. Because I know somebody's going to watch the video. I know what I'm doing. Is he proving himself? Is he calling me out? Because the messengers are, Coach Greg, he's calling you out. He lifted this and looked at the camera and he was, uh, uh. so I can't wait to see. I've already watched a couple minutes from someone else. So I kind of got to the part where he's deadlifting. So I'm kind of pumped to see. So you want to get bigger and stronger? It's actually really, really simple. There's only one way to do it. You just go on HRT. It's that simple. Well, you have to still train and eat right. But yeah, it would certainly help. And I suggest you go talk to this guy. Why didn't Jeff suggest you talk to Coach Greg? I know a lot about HRT because I'm on it. I got some farm school grade HGH, uh, low dose trend. And Why would you want low dose trend? If you're gonna use trend, you don't want it to be low dosed. Jeff doesn't need any anabolics or PDs to improve. He can get bigger, stronger, leaner, faster, everything at 44. Why? Because just like Michael Hearn, he improves like fine wine. As he ages, he gets better. Or he could be just going from using fake plates to now using real actual weights, which would cause a greater stimulus for muscle growth. He might make you think that that's the only way for you to get bigger and stronger, but there's a hell of a lot more ways to do this. And guys, that's what I want to make sure I do here for you today, because it's as simple as two words. It's as simple as two words. If you don't want to use anabolics, you got to do progressive overload. What does that mean? Train harder than last time. It's my own terminology. I make my own words. Progressive overloads, kind of confusing. Uh, prog uh, train harder than last time. How hard? Harder than last time. And typically, you need to use real weights to do so. So Jeff's gonna explain not to be a moron and know that there isn't just one way to progressively overload. You can progressively overload without just adding weight to the bar. You could do more reps. You could slow them down, you could pause, you could do parcels, so many ways. There's even more ways than last time. Last time there was only a certain amount of ways to progressive overload. The next time there's even more ways. If you don't know all these ways, watch Jeff, he's gonna explain them. Let's get started right off with the most obvious way to create progressive overload and that's simply adding more weight to the exercise that you're performing. Okay, because some of you guys are morons, he had to repeat the fact that you can add weight to the bar to make it harder than last time. It can apply to a three rep, a four rep, a five rep, even higher rep levels. As you're able to do more weight at those levels, you are <laughs> <too> strong. <laughs> So Jeff is lifting two plates, three plates, 365, 405, and then 425 pounds on the deadlift. And he's struggling to lift it, but he does get it up. Then he slams the weight down and looks at the camera as if he's going to fight with someone. It's like, what? I, what is happening? Are you 44 years old? Even when I break world records in the deadlift, I don't look at the camera and slam the weight down and act like a weirdo. Why is he doing that? I'll tell you why. Because he wrote on my wall that I said, hey, you're using fake weights and you might not be natty. You might be on HRT. He's lifting 425 pounds and dropping it on purpose so that it clangs to say, hey, that ain't no fake 425 or weight at those levels. And then looks at the camera. I'm telling you, it looked like he was ready to fight. He's like, oh, gee. If I was standing right there and he looked at me like that, I'd be like, why are you looking at me like that? What did I do? Is it that bad? Anyway, 425 pounds. He lifted it up and he did it on his own. So I would say he's probably good for 440 for a one rep max if he had to. For $1,000 or a million dollar bet, he could do 440, maybe 450. 
Let's give him 450. I like to round up. It's a nice even number. He could do 450 pounds with the belt. When he lifted fake plates, he had 495 or 500 pounds on, and he did it for two easy reps. So does doing 425 pounds and maybe being able to do 450 prove that you can easily do 500 pounds for two? I know that this sounds like a trick question, so I'm gonna say it again. Does barely being able to do 450 prove that you didn't use fake weights when you lifted 500 pounds for multiple reps? I hope all of you answered with no, but there's some people that don't know this because I read the comments on Jeff's post and the commenters were saying, oh, so much for those fake plates. Proving it, Jeff. Look how strong you are. It's 425. When you say somebody's lifting fake plates, you're saying they can't lift as much as they're saying they're lifting on the bar. Doesn't mean they can't lift anything. I always said, if you want to fake something properly, just fake it a little bit. Add one fake plate on each side. So rather than 495, if you put a real 405 and add fake one fake plate to each side, it's going to look like it's a real lift because the weights are still heavy. The form is kind of the same, except you're lifting a bit more. So that's what Jeff did. He used fake weights. You can't argue with it. We've seen him in multiple videos. I'm not gonna show it all over again. You all know it. If you don't know that he used fake plates in the past, you absolutely are a moron or you haven't seen the videos where he's done so. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. There's not a maybe. There's not a 1%. There's not a Coach Greg's only right 99.5% of the time. No, there's not even a 0.00001% chance that he has not used fake plates in those videos. It's not possible as in it's impossible as in there's just as much chance that the sun is going to turn blue right now it didn't as Jeff used real weights okay there's way more chance that he's natty than that he used fake plates okay does that prove anything yet I got more to say on that so in point two you can do more sets at the same intensity that you were doing so instead of doing three sets you can do four sets but not just a crappy four set. You still have to push yourself. You can't just say, oh, I'm gonna just do more volume. The volume has to be at a certain threshold where it's actually promoting growth. You can't just say, oh, I'll just do 10 sets of 10 with the weight you can do 100 reps with and say, I'm gonna build muscle. No, you have to keep going with a weight that's still challenging. Maybe not all out, but certainly difficult. And effort. Whatever you did last time, train harder than last time. So obviously Jeff and I agree here. You go into the gym, whatever effort you did, memorize that effort and go harder than last time. If you went and trained like a pussy, train a little bit less like a pussy. Add one more rep, one little bit harder. Doesn't mean you have to go in the gym and do 20 reps past failure and slam the weight down and scream at the camera. <laughs> you just need to train a little bit harder than you did. Just one rep, half a rep even is plenty. Man, he doesn't look natural at all as he's doing these curls. This is the least natty he's ever looked, I'd have to say. I wonder if he was being called out for fake plates and then decided, hey, I think I'm gonna be not natty and then started pushing himself harder and got stronger than last time. He certainly looks more impressively built. So he's either on HRT now or he's on something that helps him build muscle now or he was training incorrectly years ago because you don't improve at the age of 44 if you've been training for 25 years properly. Ask Jeff yourself, say, Jeff, if I start training as a teenager and I'm 44 years old, should I continue to be improving if I did everything properly up to that point? If he says, yes, you should expect to keep getting bigger than last time, then he's not being truthful. And next thing you can do, you can rest less between sets. So obviously with less rest between sets, less recovery, then the weight's gonna feel heavier. And so without adding weight to the bar, it's gonna get harder to do. You can actually increase rest time to progressively overload. By resting longer than last time, you're recovering more, you're more fresh, and you can lift more weight. Oftentimes you're thinking, well, I can't lift any heavier, I can't. But what if you add a minute's rest? and you're more recovered. Then instead of having to drop that weight down, you're more recovered, you're more fresh, and you can push harder. So when your goal is strength especially, you want to increase rest time so that you're fully recovered to push the hardest amount of weight. You want to increase recovery time a bit longer so that you're recovered maximally to push the heaviest amount of weight. That's going to make you stronger than last time.
However, if it's just hypertrophy, it's okay to just shorten that rest time a little bit because the aim is not to just rest and lift maximum weight. It's okay to lift a little bit less weight because you have less ATP stores and less recovery and to just push as hard as you can given the fact that you know that you're fatigued because you've only rested one and a half to two minutes between sets, for example. Being a power lifter from a powerlifting background, I tend to favor longer rest times because I've always tried to get stronger. And it, with that increased strength, I also had increased muscle mass that went with it. Another thing you can do is increase range of motion as you're lifting. So he's explaining so with the bicep, but I prefer to use the bench press. So for example, when Jeff says you shouldn't lower the bar to your chest, if you actually use proper advice and bench press to your chest, not a few inches from it and lower it to your chest that increases range of motion. So that you're putting the chest under more stress for more range of motion for more time under tension. When Jeff pauses about a two or three inches above the chest and presses up like that, you can now go all the way to your chest and properly bench press, lift the weight up and make more gains. It's a good tip. You might want to suggest Jeff do it next time he does bench. See the sarcasm in that, babe? Because he actually says you shouldn't bench press to the chest. So I didn't make that up. Another thing you can increase the range of motion by like, for example, you step on the top of a plate for deadlifts. It makes you bend over further than last time. You could squat deeper than you did before. So many different ways to increase the range of motion. I'm sure you can get creative and decide for yourself. How am I going to increase the time under tension of this exercise? And in other ways, use bands in several different ways, which I'm not gonna go over because it's so obviously easy. Just add bands to your lifts and it's gonna make it harder in a certain way and you will enjoy it. And it is in fact a good way to do this. I love bands. It takes a bit of time to get the bands out and set it up, but really when you use it, it's quite enjoyable. You can make so many of your lifts harder at the top, easier at the bottom, like on a squat, bicep curls, and so it's really something to give a shot. And maybe you're bored in your training, give this a shot, you might like it again. And another tip he gives is to pause. Pause during lift, pause at the bottom. That's what I usually do. You say you pause halfway on the curl and keep going, certainly you can do that. I incorporate pausing mostly on my leg workouts and I'll pause in the deepest part of the motion, really feel my glutes working, stop the weight and then I can go back up because I'm trying to lift the least amount of weight that still makes me challenge. So I'm trying to make the weight feel harder, not easier. I can bang out more reps, not really focus on anything and just pump them out and use more weight but that's more dangerous. I've already had hip surgery and pausing is certainly a great way to slow down the movement and make it more difficult without adding weight, which of course makes it safer, safer than last time. So clearly more overload than last time when you deadlift and you have to stop halfway up. Way more overload. Isn't it interesting that Jeff Cavalier is lifting with true actual weights in this? Do you think that might have something to do with Coach Greg? Possibly, and I'm not the only one. I'm not the one that pointed this out, but I'm certainly the one he commented on. And it's having an impact. People are talking about it. People are making videos. Did he use fake weights? Is he proving that he didn't now? People are talking about it. People are a lot less likely now to fake the weights that they're lifting to appear stronger than they are to sell programs. Because trust me, the internet is full of lies. People are trying to stand out and they'll say or do almost anything to have you believe that they're better than everybody else. That somehow their program's better than yours. That their program is better than last time. I do the same thing. I tell you every single day, buy my cookbook, buy my training book. My training book is coming out soon. It's almost done. It's going to be ridiculously amazing. I have a Holman Hotel hypertrophy workout book. This is going to be the training plans, 12 of Coach Greg's training plans. The Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding from Arnold Schwarzenegger better than that. Way in fact better. But I mean, come on, he wrote it in the 80s. It's been around for decades. This is 2020 when it's okay to be a circle, but not okay to say the word obese. This decade, this year, this age, my plan is amazing. It's so this, <laughs> where am I? I'm, I travel back in time and forward and make it apple goop. I don't know where I am anymore. My brain's not functioning, but I know you should buy my training book because it's going to be ridiculously awesome. Trust me. I'm almost done. It is so 
freaking good when you buy it. And it's gonna be expensive, more expensive than last time, but it's gonna be amazing. So buy my training book when it comes out. So see, I'm trying to tell you my plan's better than Jeff Cavalier's. Of course it is, you know it is. Jeff will probably not comment, he won't dare say, no, no, my training plan's better than Coach Greg's. He's not even gonna dare say it. He doesn't even dare say he used fake plates even though he did. All of us YouTubers, we chase clout, except for Jeff, he doesn't need to do that. Because if he did, he would get buried. And so he doesn't want that, he wants to avoid clout, because the clout that Jeff would get from calling out other people would bring him down. Most people, clout brings them up. So people now use my name to get me to do clout for them, before I had to use them for my own clout. Cloud is one of my new favorite words, and I use it as much as possible because more people are gonna learn from me if I call out someone's name and talk about them in a video when I'm trying to express opinion on something or educate the people. Even I, when I curl, I often will use two arms at the same time, and I definitely notice it more difficult than when I can use one arm back and forth. I can usually lift five or 10 pounds more, one at a time, than if I use them both at a time. So definitely a smart way to make the exercise not only faster, but make it safer because you're not having to lift as heavy a weight. Another example, the deadlifts touch and go way easier than if you pause. I can usually get half the reps if I pause as if I go touch and go. So what that means, if I lift 620 pounds for 20 reps and I do it without touch and go, I could probably only get it for 10 reps. So for example, when Jeff uses fake plates and does five plates for two touch and go, he probably could only get one rep with a pause, okay? Or if he uses real weights and uses 405, he probably could get two or three reps touch and go, but if he paused it, he'd probably only get one or two because he would get a rep less. That makes it harder to have to actually pause the weight. If you want to build muscle and get stronger, train harder than last time. And there's so many ways to do that. The way you choose is up to you. Jeff Cavalier, he's lifting real weights in this video. I'm not calling him out. I'm saying he uses real weights. I'm saying in the past he used fake weights. This video has nothing to do with the past. It's only the present. Hopefully from now on he's using real weights and doesn't resort to the fake stuff. Great job, Jeff Cavalier. GregDuset.com for coaching. Greg Duset IP Pro. Watch some of these videos over here. And until next time, I am out. There.